Father, I thank you that you've anointed my husband to preach the good news, to equip us to do the same, God. I just declare, Father, my husband is open for your spirit to pour through, to bring your word to us, God, the word that you have, the living word of God, to bring it to us today in a way that brings us to life and revives the joy and the passion of serving you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What an exciting time to be alive. <clears throat> All right, we're going to start in Luke chapter 1. I will begin in verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. And the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. All right. If, you're in the, if you can hear the sound of my voice, I want you to know God is saying you are his favored one. All right. The, the Lord is with you today. All right. The Lord is with you today. And so the angel said, Greetings, O favored one. The Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. I don't think Harry was used to Gabriel showing up. This wasn't like an everyday thing. You know, she's like, what's going on here? Um, and the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you will conceive in your room and bear a son and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of, the, of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. In his kingdom, there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child will be born, will be called Holy, the Son of God. And behold, your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month with her who is called barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And Mary said, Behold, I am the servant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. Praise God. Man, this is true. This is, this is Mary conceiving Jesus. What happened? The word of the Lord came to Mary. Okay, this was the, she, knew the, she knew the promise of the, of, of the Savior. She knew the, you know, what the prophets had been prophesying. She knew the declaration. She hears the angel, and the angel is repeating to her the word of the Lord. And Mary says, may it be unto me according to your word. And because she received the word of the Lord by faith, the Holy Spirit was able to germinate that word within her. And the word conceived and brought forth Jesus. May it be unto me according to your word. This is true for all of us here today. When we hear the word of God preached, when we read the word of God, and for example, it says, we just read this, for nothing will be impossible with God. I say, let, may it be unto me according to your word, God. Amen. Okay, Philippians 4.13 4, also says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yeah. Again, what things? All things, amen. May it be unto me according to your word, God. <laughs> you know, we got to get used to saying that. Amen. Wow, may it be unto me according to your word. Yeah. You know, it, did Mary have to have a very big explanation? The angel didn't have to go into like a biology lesson and explain like, hey, this is how it's going to happen. She just heard the word of the Lord. She said, how? she wasn't asking in doubt like that'll never happen. She said, well, how can this be? And the angel just said, this is how it's going to be. It's going to be by the power of God. When you receive the word in faith, the power of God can go to work. Okay? When you stand on the word in faith, the power of God can go to work. Mary hears the word. She receives it by faith. And if you go on, and I encourage you, you know, I know many of you are going to do this. I love doing this. You know, you don't have to save it for Christmas week. 
but reading through chapter Luke, reading the passages of, of the scriptures where it talks about the birth of Christ and what's going on, what does Mary do? She doesn't just sit there and say, oh, wow, this is super awesome. I'm going to give birth to a Savior and not go anywhere or do anything. What does she do? She goes to see her cousin. Wow, Elizabeth's in on the know on this one. I'm going to go. And, and then she, and when she gets, she, she starts to sing. She starts to, she sings a song of praise for what's happening to her. She doesn't wait for the bump to show up. Okay? Oh, I guess that angel was right. Yeah, she didn't go take the whatever. She didn't run to the Walgreens and get a pregnancy test and say, well, let me see if this word is working. You know what I mean? She, she, takes, she takes action on the word. She hears the word. She receives it in faith. And then she starts to, she starts to celebrate. She starts to sing. She starts to thank God for, wow, this is awesome. They're going to call me blessed forever. But she hasn't even had a baby yet. I don't even think she's showing. She probably doesn't even feel pregnant. Not that I would even know what that feels like, but I've heard. She's, she's, she received the word by faith, and she took action on that word. She starts to praise God. You know, and this morning, man, we are praising God. We're praising God. We're, we're, we, praise, we praise God all the time, you know, and in and. There is so much power in our praise. Yeah. There is so much power in our thanksgiving. Yeah. Praising God and, and, and thanking him for his precious promises before they show up is called faith. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Mary has taken, she's, she's, her faith has taken over. Okay. She's not operating by what she sees. She's operating by the word of God. And because she's operating by the word, her actions are following the word. The word is, you're going to conceive and bear a child, and he's going to be the savior of the world. She's like, whoa, I'm going to make up a song about this. Because <laughs> this is awesome, you know? And that's what we need to be like. When we get a word from the Lord, we got to make up, we got to start, like, oh, I'm going to start singing about this. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to declare my victory. I'm going to rehearse my victory. Okay? We, we got to rehearse you know, when the Lord, the Lord has told me, and I've said this, I think, a few times over the last few weeks, like, be ready for what you've been praying for to happen. Like, you've been asking for things that coincide with my, my prophetic declarations for you and for your life and for your city and for your country. You've been declaring, you've been standing. Are you ready for those things to happen? I, and, I'll, and I'll give you a, a, a little example here. <clears throat> when we came into this place, we were uh, uh, subleasing it from another church. And it was a hassle. You know, it was just a hassle because we had to come in and get set up. We were doing a Saturday night service and a lot of set up and take down because it, was, it looked completely different. And they had their own unique, very unique setup, and we had ours and they weren't the same. So we had to, you know, set all our stuff up. And it was a hassle. And and I was praying, like, Lord, we need, our own sp- we need our own place. Like, let's have our own place. Give us our own place. And he said, this place will be yours by the time you come back from Tijuana. Because I was going on a mission trip to Tijuana. And I, and I heard it so clearly. And this was, like, in January of that year. And I looked at the calendar. When am I going to Tijuana? Okay, it's the last week of July. So by the end of July, this place is going to be ours. And you can actually go back and look. I think if the messages are probably still up there. I don't, you know, I don't think we took them down. Maybe we should. I don't know. Um, <laughs> but I'm up here, and I'm like... The Lord spoke to me, and he said, this place is... And I'm preaching this in, like, January, and I'm preaching it in February. I think, by, you know, maybe by the end of March, I stopped... Or by the end of March, I was pretty much not preaching anymore. Because um, I started out on faith. Like, the Lord said, this is going to be our place by the time I come back from Tijuana. And, and I was declaring it and sharing it with the congregation, because I had great confidence in the prophetic word that the Lord had released to me. But then I didn't see anything happening. So I kind of started being a little bit more and more quiet about it, you know? <laughs> <laughs> to the point where it was like, huh, well, hopefully doesn't, nobody remembers me saying those things because obviously, obviously I missed it because it's like July 1st and nobody's going anywhere. This church is still here. We're still here. You know, maybe, maybe we did take those messages down. Now that I think about it, <laughs> take those messages down, John. <laughs> People have short memories and the ones that remember are really forgiving, so... Well, it's the week before I'm supposed to go to Tijuana. The pastor of the church that is in here calls me up, and he says, hey, I just want you to know we're moving out, like, right now, and 
the place is yours. And I was so confused. I was so caught off guard. We had done absolutely nothing to prepare for it. And I'm leaving the country for like a week or in a week and a half or something like that. Wow. So when, by the time I get back from Tijuana, they're out of here. We're like, what are we doing? Ah. You know, and, and, and it wasn't, again, I have to tell you, this place looked nothing like it does now. Does, uh, does John, you were here. Um, there were, yeah, we were, I mean, this, like, there was a lot of work to be done. I'm just going to say it like that. I'm not, I'm not, you know, trying to say bad things about anything, but not, we, we had a lot of work to do to, to, for it to be our place. And we didn't have any lease agreement. We didn't have, I mean, we didn't have money to pay rent. I mean, there was a lot of things that we didn't, you know. So I come back from Tijuana, and it was about, what, about three months of, like, busting our butts, trying to get stuff worked out, try, work, working with the landlord, doing, you know, and, and the physical labor in here. We didn't have anything set up. We didn't know what we were, you know, and it was just like, and it's, am, it, it's amazing to me when I look back that God gave me a seven-month heads up. Wow. And I was still completely caught off guard when it happened. <laughs> it, it amazes me that I actually had the boldness and courage to stand up in front and declare it but I did nothing to prepare for it. Wow. it it's, it's amazing to me. And the Lord has spoken to me about this several times. He says, remember when you came back from Tijuana? And I know what he's saying. It's like, oh, yeah, I should probably get ready. You know, <laughs> like, because when I came back, like, in my back of my mind on this mission trip, it's awesome and glorious. I'm thinking, oh, no, we don't have anything. You know, I'm like, I'm, I know what I'm coming back to. Right. The Lord had told me seven months earlier in January to be ready for that day. But when the day came, I wasn't ready. Part of our faith, a big part of our faith, is to hear God's word, receive it by faith, yep. declare it, celebrate it, and then take actionable steps yeah. to prepare for that. Yeah. You know, seven years ago. Yeah, this, this wasn't like this year. <laughs> like seven years ago. But believe me, I think I've repeated the lesson a few times between now and then. Um, but the Lord is, I really feel like he is saying like, you know, my church has been praying and declaring for things to happen, but are they really ready for them to happen? Okay. Uh, and I'm just going to be straight with you here. Are, are we really ready for what we've been praying for? Are we really ready for what we've been declaring for? Are we really ready for the things that we, the words and the things that we're standing on to happen? Because it's one thing to say, yes, Lord, this is what we want. Well, if, you know, if that's what you want, then have you taken, like, actual steps to receive it? Right. Have you, are you preparing for, are you rehearsing the battle? Are you rehearsing the victory? Are you rehearsing what it's going to look like? And, and not that you're going to know 100%, but, like, something simple. This place is going to be yours by the end of July. And, and I know I'm not the only one. I'm not going to ask for a show of hands. That you, can, you can say, oh, yeah, I remember when the Lord told me that, and... I was praying for it, and then it happened, and I was like, oh, what do I do now, you know? Like, be ready for God to answer your prayers. Yes, yes. Take the steps necessary to, to be, you know, so when Mary prayed, when Mary heard from the angel, when Mary said, let it be unto me according to your word, that's not where it stopped for her. She took steps. She, she did what was necessary to prepare to receive the, that conceived word, that sh the, the, the baby Jesus. She Amen. took the necessary steps to prepare to receive the promise of the Lord. Okay? Now, let's look at, let's look at this scripture here. Uh, Joshua 1, uh, verse 7. <clears throat> Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the law of my servant Moses gave you. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, that you may be successful wherever you go. Keep this book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and be successful. And I, and I love a lot of the translations say, and then you will make your way prosperous then you will make your way prosperous. How do we make our way prosperous? We make our way prosperous by meditating on God's word. We take the action. 
we meditate on God's word, we declare God's word, we declare his precious promises over our lives, and then it, but it doesn't end there. God says, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged, for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. Joshua didn't say, wow, praise God, that's comforting. I think I'll sit down, take a little break, and wait for good things to happen. <laughs> Joshua said in verse 10, so Joshua ordered the officers of the people, go through the camp and tell the people to get your provisions ready. Get ready to receive what the Lord has promised. Get ready to, to, to actually have the word of the Lord come to pass. Three days from now, you will cross the Jordan here to go in and take possession of the land. Your God is giving you... Okay, so this is it. God, in this lesson, is repeated over and over through Scripture. 1 Timothy 1, verse 18. This is Paul telling Timothy, and I love this, I love this passage of Scripture. And it is so powerful for us. First Timothy, Timothy, my son, starting in verse 18. I am giving you this command. Paul is commanding Timothy. He's giving Timothy command. In keeping with the prophetic pro prophecies once made about you. He's saying, Timothy, you've had words spoken over you. You've had powerful prophetic utterances spoken over you. You've had the word of the Lord declared over you. You've had God's precious promises declared over your life. Don't forget them. So that by recalling them, you might battle well. Wow. You might battle well. Holding on to the truth in a good conscience which some have rejected and, and so have suffered shipwreck with regard to, your, to their faith. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, unfortunately, I've seen a lot of shipwrecked faith these days. I've seen a lot of brothers and sisters in the Lord like just re almost ready to walk away from their faith. If I'm reading this right, and I believe I am, praise the Lord, <laughs> the difference that Paul is telling Timothy, the difference between having shipwrecked faith and not having shipwrecked faith is by holding strong to the word of God, yeah. holding strong to the prophetic word of God, holding strong to that word. What's your option? Well, your option is to let go of it, start to question everything, and have a shipwreck. Yeah. Wow. I'll take hold strong. Yep. Okay? I'll take stand firm. Yep. I'll take, let's, hey, what did the Lord promise us again? Let's rehearse this. Let's, 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 let's meditate on those precious promises of God. And I'll tell you what, last Wednesday we had an awesome Bible study. It was awesome. It was so much fun. We took turns sharing testimonies about the amazing things God has done for us in 2020. The only, the only, the only we put a little thing, hey, it has to be something God did in 2020. And, you know, and we could have probably, we could have probably st stayed through, to, through this morning. Because everybody just kept wanting to share more and more and more and more. And it's like, man, what, what an awesome God we serve. What, what an awesome God we serve. That even, and I was just talking to one of our dear brothers here this morning. And he shared with me, he's like, man, I got so much work, I don't know what to do. I got so much work, I don't know what to do. I, you know, I got more work than I can handle. Well, praise God. Man, this is, this is the, the Lord's given us the keys to the kingdom. Amen. And one of the, one of the super duper important things, I use super duper, one of the super duper important things we get to do is, is we get to encourage one another. Yes. Yes. We get to encourage one another. Okay. Not just, and you guys are really good at this. Praise God. That's why I love coming here because I, I always get encouraged when I come here. And not just from Melissa. Sometimes Magnum gives me encouragement and He's really good at it. And, and you will give me encouragement. We share testimonies. We talk about things. We share. And that's one of the so important things of, of, of the body of Christ coming together. Yes. And that's why I, I really want to encourage you to not just limit your relationships with people in the body to just Sunday mornings or Wednesday night Bible studies or whatever, but have fellowship with one another. Yes. You know, Scripture says that they, 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 they gathered together and, and, they, and they had fellowship. They broke bread from house to house, yep. you know. 
they, they enjoyed being with each other. They enjoyed communicating with one another. They encouraged one another. And they built each other up in the faith. Because when you get around positive, encouraging, like-minded believers, it is like, ah, oh, I'm not the only one. Praise God. You know, hey, and if you're watching online, praise God. Thank you so much for watching us. I, I really encourage you to continue to watch, you know, if, if, you know, for whatever reason, you know, I know we got people watching us all around the world, and you, obviously it's impractical, impractical for you to come in if you're in the Philippines to, you know, oh, go to church and victory center. Um, but find some people in your community yes. that you can have relationship with that you can be encouraged by some like-minded believers that you can uh network with and 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 you know because we need each other you know the body is not you know the finger by itself is not a hand you know and, and we need to function together we need to function together we need to encourage one another you know scripture says forsake not the assembly because as, as, as the troubling times, and I'm not doom and gloom guy, trust me on this one. Like, as, and again, as troubling as 2020 has been, man, we've been so blessed. Amen. And when we take time to reflect and share in the testimony, it's just like, wow, this is actually super encouraging. Yeah. Wow, there is a God in, in, in Wisconsin. There is a God in, in the United States. There is a God in Israel. Yeah. And he's powerful, and he's alive, and his word is sharper than a two-edged sword. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to help me divide and conquer and, and see things truthfully. So today, the Lord's saying, you've been praying for things. You've been expecting things. What are you going to do when those things happen? Exercise your faith. Do you know, I heard a... I'm a big Andrew Womack fan. If you guys don't know who Andrew Womack is, please, please bless yourself. <laughs> look him up. Look up his podcast. Look up his Truth and Liberty Coalition. Look up what he's doing. So anointed. His teachings are, you know, super solid. Um, you know, again, and I, I want to throw another plug out. If you, you don't know who Kevin Dedman is, hey, yeah, you don't know who Kevin Dedman is. <laughs> <laughs> Most of you don't know who Kevin. Okay, Kevin Dedman. Uh, I got. I had a chance to meet him. He, he just, he's like he's watching. He might be watching. I don't know. Um, but he's a minister based out of California. Pretty large ministry. Uh, he's been putting some. I would say probably next to Rich Oliver, our amazing elder, who's also out of California. Um, I would say some of the most encouraging stuff out there right now is coming out of Kevin Dedman, um, you know, Lance Wall now, uh, Dutch Sheets, you know. We've got a lot of, you know, it, there's a lot of people at, at the, I would say, national, international level people who are really encouraging, really positive, really, you know, and, and we have to be able to receive from those guys, okay? But at the same time, when the only person you know that's being encouraging is like in California, it's a little discouraging, amen? <laughs> so wherever you are, if you're here, praise God, get somebody's phone number. I know not all of you are on Facebook, and that's a great thing. Don't be on Facebook. Go on MeWe or something. Um, but get, get, build relationships. Amen. You know, get, be able to send each other messages and connect and outside of a Sunday morning um, so that you can encourage one another and not get into this, not get into like, cut off from the body, you know, because there's times, and, and I know there's people here, you know, in, in this time, like, people are being, like, super duper careful, like, oh, pastor, I had a sniffle on Thursday, so I'm not going to come to church on Sunday. Hey, great, praise God, if that's what you're feeling, you know what I mean? Like, we're all being extra careful and all this stuff, but I'm saying don't depend on being here to, main, to, to maintain fellowship. Take it upon yourself to build connections with one another, okay? And I... I as great as like social networking things are, a lot of times your relationships with those people aren't really real. You know what I mean? Like you could be talking to somebody and you don't even know if they're a 12-year-old boy or a 60-year-old granny. They, you know what I mean? Just based on their profile picture, like who are you, you know? But when you build relationships with real people and then you're messaging with like real people that you know, it's way more meaningful. It's way more encouraging, you know? And, and the testimonies are way more impactful. 
you know, and, and so that's what we need. We need to strengthen one another. We encourage one another to stand fast and stand firm. So listen to this. This is what... Uh, Judges 6.12. <laughs> Judges 6.12. And an angel of the Lord, and this is Gideon. woo Gideon. I love Gideon. You guys know that. Yeah. So appears to Gideon and says, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. <laughs> I don't think Gideon was feeling it. <laughs> he wasn't feeling it. He, he was, remember where he was. He's hiding in a grain. He's hiding somewhere. Inside of a little tiny compartment, threshing grain. I grew up on a farm. I know how dusty stuff like that is. Let me tell you, horrible. Horrible, okay? Like, he's, he's inhaling all this dust, and it's just awful. There's an, I was on an angel who shows up and says, Oh, mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. And it's like, ah. Uh, this is to Gideon's response. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, <laughs> if the Lord is with us, why then has all of this happened to us? And where are the wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hands of the Midians, given us into the hands of the enemy. The Lord has forsaken us. Gideon is like preaching back to the angel. No, 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 let me tell you how it is. This is super bad. The Lord has forsaken us. The Lord has left us because he's not doing anything. And the angel's there to say, Hey, Gideon, uh, you've been praying for God to do something, guess what? You're it. That's why I'm calling you a mighty man of valor, even though you're hiding and covered with dust. You know, because you need a little encouragement here, buddy. Because you got to buck up. You got to stand up. Okay, you got to stand your ground, and you, you and you and you're not going to get away with it under under the radar at this point. Okay, you've been trying to fly under the radar for too long, Gideon. You're wondering where the Lord is. You're wondering why nobody step up. Gideon, guess what? You get to be the hero you've been praying for. Whoa, how about that, Gideon? How does that sound? How does that sound, church? <laughs> How's that sound, everybody? Good. Praise God. Okay, because guess what? Jesus is in you. Guess what? You are a mighty warrior in Christ Jesus. You are, a, you are a saint. You are a person of valor. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Okay? God does not bring you to a problem for you to be defeated. He brings you to the problem because you are the solution. Okay? You're going to encounter obstacles in life because you're going to show other people how to get through them. Or you're going to just completely get them out of the way. Okay? God is not bringing you to a problem so you can be defeated. He said, guess what, brothers and sisters? You're going to have problems in this world, but be encouraged because I've already overcome them. Okay? You can find the solution. You can find the strength in me, and I'm in you. Christ is in you. The hope of glory, the answer to everything is in you. So whatever you're running into, remember, you got the alpha and the omega. You got the beginning and the end. You got the word incarnate that has brought you back into the relationship with your heavenly father. And there is nothing by any means that can harm you. Amen. I said this last week and I'll say it again. The worst thing the enemy can do is threaten you with heaven. Whoa. Wait a minute here. You mean to tell me that I get to check out? What did Paul say about that? <laughs> he said, well, to be in the body is great because I'm doing what the Lord's called me. But, man, if I'm not here, it's so much better. I love the way Paul would talk about it. You know, I know a man who went to heaven. <laughs> I'm not going to drop any names here. Um, but I'm telling you, like, guess what? We got nothing to lose. We got nothing to lose. Whatever it is you're facing today, Christ is in you. The hope of glory is in you. He has given you, he has conquered sin and death. He has given you the keys to the kingdom. He has given you his word, 2 Peter 1, 3, and 4, Ephesians 1, 3. He, he, he's given you this stuff so that you can be victorious in all things at all times. And there's, there comes a time in life when you just got to stand firm. Okay, you just got to stand tall. All right. Uh, you know, I, I love reading about David's mighty men. It goes, it, it, I, I, I just posted this on Facebook a little bit ago. 
where David and I can't one of the guys, one of his one of his mighty one of his mighty men. I said there they they went to defend a field, a wheat field, and then the enemy shows up and every, it says and the army took off. Everybody leaves them yeah. except for David and one of the guys. And it said they they stood their ground. They stood their ground and they fought all day and they defeated the enemy because the Lord gave them the victory. Yeah. Who, okay. Yeah. How, what kind of victory would they have had if they would have said, you know what, we're just going to go along and get along and we're getting out of here. Yeah. Everybody's running that way, let's go. Let's join the pack. Yeah. If the Lord wants us to have a victory, he'll bring it to us. Well, sometimes victory doesn't look the way you thought it was going to look. Right. Okay? Wow. That's if you, here's the truth. If you want to have a victory, you're looking for a fight. You don't get victory when there's no fight. You have to have a fight to have a victory, okay? So when you enter into the conflict, guess what? Praise God, you're getting what you asked for, amen? <laughs> the victory is on the other side. The victory is on the other side. You got, we we got to be ready to get what we asked for, okay? Oh, I wish somebody would stand up to those bullies. Mighty man of valor. <laughs> Let's have a talk. <laughs> what are you doing this afternoon? <laughs> How would you like to stand up to those bullies? And, 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 and Gideon is like, oh, are you talking about me? <laughs> are you sure? I thought this was all on the Lord. Okay, like Mary said, I am a servant of the Lord. May it be unto me according to your word. What did Gideon, what did Gideon get to do? Gideon got to, lead, he got, to, he got to lead his country. He got to set the captives free. You know what? And, and the Lord said, Gideon, Gideon, and I encourage you to read this. He said, Gideon, I'm paraphrasing, but just a little bit. You got too many people with you. You got too many people, Gideon. If you do this with all these people, they're not going to know I was involved. We're going we're to send some of them home. What happens next? The Lord says, Gideon, you got too many people. We're going to send some of these guys home. So he sends even more home. What's going on here? Okay. Sometimes victory doesn't look like you thought it was going to look. Sometimes things don't turn out the way we thought they were going to turn out. But when we all, but honest, this is 100% true. When we look at God's word, we're always going to see it and be like, oh, yeah, I should have known. <laughs> oh, yeah, is that what I was supposed to do? Oh, yeah, it's right there in black and white. Praise God. <laughs> so I'm telling you, when Joshua got the word that they were going to have a victory, they prepared for it, Okay. You know, at Jericho, and I'm almost done, they marched around the city. They marched around the city. They marched around the city. And I know there's a lot of Jericho marches going on right now. Yeah. A lot of Jericho marches, and they're like, we're gonna, we're, uh, the walls are coming down. The walls are coming down. Praise God, the walls are coming down. I 100% agree with you. But what happens when the walls come down? The battle begins. Okay? The walls come down. Praise God, it's not over. Yep. You got to be ready to take your stand. Okay? When the walls come down, the enemy doesn't just roll over and say, oh, the walls came down. <laughs> they had more than trumpets with them that day. Read the, they, they had their swords. They were ready for the battle. Yes. They were ready for the battle. The, the walls are coming down. The victory is yours. But be ready to take your stand. That's what the word tells us. It says, take your stand. Be ready. We got to be ready. We got to be ready, people. We got to be ready because victory is ours. Victory is guaranteed. Vic yeah, it, what's that? It's our covenant. We have a victorious covenant. But man, and I'm telling you, whatever you've been praying for, Whatever precious promise you've been standing on, get ready to receive it. <laughs> Amen? What is it going to look like when it's yours? Womack shared this testimony. I went there and I kind of backed up. Womack shared a testimony of a woman who, uh, oh, she's blind, I believe. Uh, many of you will probably know this testimony. And she had somebody praying for her. And the, the, the minister prayed for her. And he said, okay, can you see? And she opened her eyes, and she was like, no, not yet. And he's like, no, 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 no. That's not what I mean. 
He laid his hands on her. He prayed for her. And he said, can you see? Like, she had to be able to see with her eyes closed before she could see with her natural eyes. She had to say, you know what? She had, to, she had to be able to see the victory on the inside before she could see it on the outside. Okay? You will never experience more victory on the outside than you can receive on the inside. Okay? You will never experience more victory in the, in the exterior of your life than you are experiencing in your mind. Okay? Romans 12, 2 says, Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Praise God. Because you can become trans. The transformation that you seek, the, tr- the transformation that you crave, the transformation that you know is promised to you in God's word yes. is all right there in the word. Yes. It's all right there in the word. Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so you are no longer conformed. Yes. Praise God. We don't have to be conformed to this world. We get to be transformed. There is no limit to the level of transformation you can experience in your life. None. None. It's all according to God's word. So be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. No longer conform to this world so that you can prove what is the good and acceptable perfect will of God. Man, God's got a plan. He's got a purpose. He's got given you precious and, and wonderful, magnificent promises. Second Peter 1, 3, and 4. Read those scriptures over and over and over again. You get, to ver- you get to participate in the very divine nature of God through his word, through his covenant, through the guarantee of the blood of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. All right, brothers and sisters, I'm done. I'm going to pray. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We love you. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your promises. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for your body. We speak victory. We speak healing. We speak deliverance. We speak abundance over over your people, Lord. We speak salvation over the lost right now in the name of Jesus. If you have never made Jesus your Lord and Savior, Scripture makes it clear. You believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and that he has been raised from the dead. The Father raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. Believe in your heart, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and you shall be saved. So right now, I declare Jesus is Lord. Amen. You can repeat after me. Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your salvation. I receive it today. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, if you just did that, please reach out to us. We'd love to get you in touch with some material that will transform your life. Be blessed in Jesus' name. Welcome to Victory Center Church. Our goal is to ensure that you stay connected with the church and continue growing in your faith from wherever you are. To do this, we provide a variety of resources such as our website at ivictorycenter.org, mobile app for Android and iOS, Roku channel, and Apple TV app. On our website, you can find out more information about our mission and core values. You can also find a brief overview of our current areas of ministry. You can formally join the Victory Center Church family by providing some brief contact information. Additionally, if you would like to be added to our mailing list, you can check the optional checkbox at the bottom. You can view a calendar containing all of our upcoming events on the events page. Additional updates and blog posts can be seen on our news page. If you are unable to visit us in person on a Sunday morning, feel free to watch us online through the live stream page under the media section. The best part of our website is the recordings page, which offers on-demand access to our full catalog of hundreds of videos. All these videos can also be found in the media tab of our app. Tap on a video and press the download button to continue listening to the word offline. Our app also offers the same access to event updates and the live stream posted on our website. If you are interested in a more immersive experience for watching any of our videos, check out our Roku channel and Apple TV app. Victory Center Church offers a way to give from wherever you are. Here's a quick guide on how to give through our mobile app. First, if you have not already downloaded the Victory Center Church app, you'll need to open the app labeled App Store on iOS or the app labeled Play Store on Android. Tap on the search bar and enter Victory Center Church. Tap the Get button on iOS or the Install button on Android, then return home. You can now tap on the new app icon to open our app. To give, 
tap on the middle button on the tab bar on the bottom. Tap the zero in the center of the screen and the number pad will slide up for you to enter an amount. After that, you can tap the frequency at which you would like to give the selected amount. You can swipe left to reveal more options. Tap the next button and you'll be redirected to your phone's browser to complete the payment. You can choose to continue by signing up with an email or using your pre-existing Facebook account. Enter in all the applicable information and tap sign up. You'll then need to confirm your account by going to the mail app. Tap the email from Subsplash with a subject which reads, Welcome. Then tap the Confirm Email Address button. This will redirect you back to the browser where you can finish setting up your account by linking it to a credit or debit card or a bank account. Upon entering the required information, tap Link. You can then finish your gift by tapping the Give button on the bottom of the screen. Giving online at Victory Center has never been easier. Here's a quick tutorial on how to get started. First, open a browser such as Google Chrome or Safari. Type ivictorycenter.org in the search bar and hit enter. You will see the homepage of our website. Next, click the top right tab in the navigation bar labeled Giving. You'll be redirected to a page where you can start filling out your payment information. Start by clicking the zero in the center of the screen and typing your amount. Then select the phone you would like to give to by clicking on the round button with the default title of General. In the drop down, you can choose from a list of our current funds. Then choose the frequency at which you would like to give the selected amount by clicking on one of the listed options. More options can be revealed by clicking and dragging left or right. After confirming your information, click Next. You'll be redirected to our payment processing provider's website called Subsplash. You can choose to create an account with an email or pre-existing Facebook account. Additionally, if you already have an account, you can click on the user icon in the top right and select the login option. If this is your first time giving, select on one of the two options provided to sign up. Fill in the required information, then click sign up. You'll then need to confirm your account by going to an email provider such as Gmail. Tap the email from Subsplash with the subject which reads welcome. Then tap the confirm email address button. This will bring you to a web page which confirms your account. To finish, go back to the tab with the original payment and refresh it. You may need to re-enter your payment info. After doing so, click next. This will direct you to a page where you can finish setting up your account by linking it to a credit or debit card or a bank account. Upon entering the required information, click link. You can then finish your gift by clicking the give button on the bottom of the screen. 